Well, joining me now to discuss the significance of the Japanese Prime Minister's U.S. visit is the international affairs analyst and director of the Global Strategy Project, Marco Vincenzino. Marco, pleasure to see you as always. Um, so, this historic um, address from uh, Prime Minister Abe in the Congress, uh, what do you think it sort of meant for people back home in Japan and, and what do you think it was for, in terms of the significance of his visit to the U.S.? In terms of significance, uh, three words. One is commemoration, second is celebration, third is renewal of vows. By commemoration, I mean is that basically marking the end of the war. Uh, the Prime Minister expressed the word repentance, condolence, but didn't issue an apology. Mm -hmm. For many in the American Congress, it wasn't enough. And for many in Asia, particularly in China and Japan, where the historical scars are very deep, they're expecting more from Japan. Uh, secondly, in terms of celebration, celebration of 70 years of a strong relationship and ties between the U.S. and Japan. I mean, over the last 70 years, Japan has become the cornerstone of U.S. foreign policy in East Asia. And in terms of renewal of vows, he came to Washington signing new defense uh, agreements, trade links, and it's an upgrading and an updating of the relationship to reflect contemporary geopolitical realities. And the visit to the World War II memorial as well today, how do you think that that will be perceived back home in Tokyo? Well, in two things. I mean, in Japan, after the Second World War, there's a strong pacifist movement developed. So those within the pacifist movement, actually even in the Japanese constitution, it prevents Japan from sending troops overseas. But over the years, exceptions have been found. But that strong pacifist strain, I think, has been satisfied. But on the other side, there's a strong nationalist strain also. Prime Minister Abe, he comes from that nationalist strain. And the fact that he visited he used the word repentance but didn't apologize will sell well to his nationalist base back home. So the country very much an ally of the U.S. now when in previous years they were very much enemies. Uh, when you look at sort of the trade and defense deals uh, signed in this visit, uh, it brings the two closer together now and that they can work closer together in terms of trade for yeah. free trade and yeah. defense for uh, operating in various areas of the world. Yeah. In terms of the defense side, that upgrading and updating to reflect current contemporary ge geopolitical realities, after something, East Asia, the series Serious, deep threat perceptions prevail on all sides. The Chinese look upon this as, a, as a, a, an attempt to contain China's growth in Asia. The Japanese look at, at, at this strong relationship with the Americans, and particularly what was signed, as a way of deterrence against China, particularly in, in, claim in, China, in Japan claiming its territorial integrity with the territorial disputes in the Senkaku Islands in the Ch East China Sea. And for the U.S. also, it's a way, the way they look at it is that if China potentially is at a threat or an opportunity, but that relationship with Japan remains strong, but at the same time, the U.S. wants an upgrade in Japan's defense policy to, for it to participate and be far more involved in international missions, not just give money, but to participate directly with military personnel. It's a really interesting point you make there about how the relationship with China could be affected in all this. Uh, do you think they would be worried in terms of the negotiations that are going on between Japan and the U.S.? On the trade side, so we discussed the defense, but on the trade side, had you asked that question some time ago, I would say the Chinese establishment would have thought of it in terms as, a, once again, a way to contain China's rising growth. But I think China today is an economically confident country. It has its own trade initiatives. It's doing its own trade agreements, not only in the region but beyond. I mean, initiatives such as the Silk Road Initiative, you have the ASEAN Plus Six. China is economically confident and is developing trade ties worldwide beyond Asia. Uh, what do you think the takeout is uh, of this for Shinzo Abe? Do you think that he can go back to Japan and say that he's you know, got a, a good deal for the people of Japan? Huh? Yeah, I mean, I think on the defense side, you can see he helping, he's helping to secure uh, Japanese national interests in the short term and in the long term in Asia. And then also on the trade side, although on the trade side, he wants the Trans-Pacific Partnership to succeed. He has to confront the agricultural lobby back home. And I think this trip helps to strengthen him to do so. Marco Vincenzino, thank you very much indeed for that. Thank you.